Well, hang out with me, Kangadin Jogi. Thank you so much for tuning in to Money Mondays. Amazing guest we have in the house. His name is Wenjohi, and he is the CEO of Imfuyo. Imfuyo. I, I, I think, I hope I have like mentioned it right and we're definitely discussing about youth and technology in agriculture i'm starting by giving out some of the major statistics that have you know that are shocking that the average age of a kenyan farmer is 61 in a country where nearly 75 percent of the total population is below 35 Meanwhile, youth um, unemployment has remained nearly at 20 to 30 uh, percent for the last 10 years. Um, for many Kenyans unemployed youth, agriculture prevents a viable business opportunity to create um, a long-lasting livelihood, but they are not um, interested. interested. And that is why we have uh, Mr. Enjoy in the house. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for coming. Asante sana. Karibu, karibu ya Mikey Dogu. All right. Uh, Kangede, I'd like yes. to thank you for having me here. Yes. Of course, I'm representing the majority of the youth. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. it's an honor to be here. Yeah. We don't take it for granted. Mm -hmm. So let me introduce myself. My name is Wanjo Hinjati. Mm -hmm. I'm the founder and CEO of an organization called Infuyo. Mm -hmm a tech-enabled business where we are addressing capital disparities mm -hmm. among farmers in Africa mm -hmm. and mainly in Kenya. Hey. So we are a youthful organization, 100%. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We obviously have, you know, some older people in the organization in yeah. terms of advisors mm -hmm. and investors and all yeah. that. Yeah. You must have a blend of the two. Yes. As much as we are youthful, mm -hmm. we need wise counsel yeah. uh, from people that have been there before. Us. Yes. Yeah. All right, let's talk about um, yourself, that you're a young person. I don't know, um, are you a youth? Are you... I am a youth. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a young person. Um, people always joke around and tell me I have a young face and a good face and all that. You know, um, uh -huh. That I could be 18 years. Yeah, know, yeah. That still means I'm a youth. Yes. But I am in my late 30s, mm -hmm. mid 30s to be mm -hmm. specific. Yes. Youthful. Yeah. A business leader. Yes. I have been in the corporate world for the longest time. Yes. But I dived into entrepreneurship. Yeah. Um, late 2020. Yes. And decided just to solve a corporate. Right project. in the middle of COVID. Yeah. Eh. And, and that was a you whole new afraid, challenge. You were not afraid, It was a whole ball game because mm -hmm. I remember our business, yeah. which is in Fuyo, mm -hmm. practically means livestock. In Fuyo means livestock. Yeah. Um, at the height of COVID 2020, mm. we were doing our first MVP. Yes. That's minimum viable product. Minimum viable product. Yeah. Mm. And for us to go to the ground and deal with our customers who are farmers, mm -hmm. we needed to get the permits. You remember the permits? Yes. The permits that you'd go to so that the you DCI can be... offices, you know, yeah. the police stations, yes. granted permission to live from one county mm -hmm. to the next. Yeah. So, of course, in Nairobi, there are very little farmers. Mm -hmm. So, we need to go to Kiambu's, yeah. to Narok, and all that. I yeah. remember all the hassle of showing the Baruas. Yeah. To be an essential, work, essential exactly. worker. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And our essentialness was basically we are providing, you know, uh, health services for animals as yeah. well as the bundled service. Yes. Within our, our, our platform. All right. Did you ever think that you're going to enter into agriculture? How did you come out um, to decide that this is the line you're going to go? Um, agriculture, no. Um, what were you technology? doing before? Yeah. Yes. Uh, what were I, you doing before? I was in tech. I was mm -hmm. in tech for the longest time. Yeah. I have held multiple positions, mm -hmm. managerial positions, yeah. so general manager positions, mm -hmm. um, and various other uh, positions eh? mm -hmm. as far as um, corporate world and technology is concerned. Yeah. So in my line of work, I never thought that I'll be very key with um, agriculture. Yes. Until mm -hmm. um, the height of the COVID and yeah. then, you know, a bit of um, just trying to do a bit of re history here and research and yes. all that. Mm -hmm. Then came a problem that we've grown up knowing, which is our farmers are uh, not poor. Mm. You know, they're not poor. It's Our farmers that, are not poor. Yeah, they're not poor. It's only <laughs> that they don't have liquidity in the bank, you know. But they have all these many assets. Yes. Because livestock, whether it's a cow, goat, or sheep, mm -hmm. or camel, yeah. you know, all of them are practically livestock. Yes. Assets. Assets. You have to put the word assets there because yeah. legally, mm -hmm. they are assets. Yeah. They're eligible to acquire a loan. I, I, I didn't a know that. Like, having a cow, you, you it's an asset. It is an asset. I, I, I probably because when I grew up, I would hear like um, you know people say that they sold 
um, their cows and you know um, there was a joke that used to go at, that people used to say that eh ni me ni me uza ngombe ni kapeleka wewe shule kumbe fadhali you know I, I can't remember how that joke used to go like people that, used that to joke, say that joke um, yeah. you know that joke is so real uh, and it happens <laughs> even now mm. uh, as we speak yeah. um, the problem is when our farmers sell off their livestock yeah they end up losing an asset okay so this farmer doesn't have some money sitting somewhere you know uh, mm. in the bank yeah or some sacco or mm-hmm. some microfinance yes. ama chini ya kitanda yeah. you know just to go and replace uh, the livestock yeah and 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 i remember when farmer on fire was here on the sh- on the show and we were discussing how we grew up looking and seeing agriculture something for the poor people because sometimes you used to think yeah. that eh, kulima kwenda kwa shamba <laughs> is not for it's not for it's it used to be looked like a poor man's job and agriculture has always been seen as a poor man's job because we never saw or people never saw um their parents or their grandparents being billionaires based on agriculture Correct. is it something that you faced as well yeah uh the perception around agriculture has always been like so mm-hmm. for the longest time yeah um ironically and quite sad it's only in developing nations or emerging markets and mainly africa i'd like yeah. to give you an example mm-hmm. um there's this i won't name the, the person here yeah? mm-hmm. there's this very prominent you know a uh, farmer yeah uh, who's also the chairman of a farmer cooperative that mm-hmm. produces a lot of milk in this yeah. country mm-hmm. he's in his 70s so whenever he's going to get his American visa mm-hmm. to travel to America. Mm-hmm. Um he just says he's a farmer. And he gets a lot of respect just by saying he's a farmer in the American embassy because farmers in developed world you know are looked at as very prominent people uh, who are bringing change into the economy mm-hmm. uh, into our social life etc etc and all yes. that. Yes. But unfortunately with emerging markets that's not the case. And I think it's more of a culture issue, it's yeah. more of a perception, it's, it's, and lack it's a of exposure really perception as well. Issue. Yeah. Um, looking at some of the statistics when you're talking about um, that is that Africa imports um, food worth 35 billion dollars. That's uh, that's it's crazy. Uh, that's that's a lot of money. It's crazy. Um, um, annually, this is annually, and this is expected to grow um, to 110 billion by 2025. That statistic alone, and remembering that even us, we are unable yeah. as a country to feed ourselves. Absolutely. We have all the resources. I mean, Africa is one of the richest, richest count, um, uh, continents. We have the land. We have the right the resources. The resources. True, 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 true. We we have also the right. Um, um climate, climate and for weather, us to to yeah. farm but we don't get there yeah and this is definitely a big issue as you were saying that um it's a really big perception that agriculture mm-hmm. is for the poor mm-hmm. yeah uh i just want to emphasize on what you're saying because mm-hmm. africa can definitely feed itself yeah That Africa can saying. feed itself. That goes without saying. Yeah. Even when you narrow it down back here home to Kenya, we can definitely feed ourselves. Mm, mm. How many tracts of land have you seen that just sit bare? Bare. And I don't. Yeah. We have this farmer uh, in Makueni County, Sultan mm-hmm. Amud, yeah. who has 100 acres of land. Mm-hmm. So he has dug four boreholes and keeps 55 uh, dairy cows. Mm-hmm. So he's producing milk and the byproducts of milk, you know, the yogurts, the cheese, wow. etc., etc. The next door neighbor yeah. is a desert, you know. So that what, goes what, back to the perception, yes. you know, um, the willingness to mm-hmm. do something as far as the land is concerned. Yes, and of course, it's not a people problem yeah. only. Mm-hmm. It is also a policy problem. Yeah, uh, is the government invested investing in enough in help, agriculture? You know? Yeah. Um, there's a time um, the AFTB president had said, had seen, had said that um, Africans need to invest almost 10 percent of their GDP um, to uh, towards agriculture. I don't know whether um, Kenya has been able to be invested like that every year. Not yet, unfortunately, not yet. Mm. And, and this is a problem across all emerging markets. Yeah. Uh, because there's so much conflict of interest mm. special interest yeah that make it so difficult for a farmer to scale mm. you know? yeah how on earth are we still importing eggs from uh, uganda for <sighs> for days? you know or even a better example <laughs> how are we still importing toothpicks for what 
toothpick, you know. Um, I think it's more of a policy issue. Yeah. Because if you look at the resourcing yes. and the mobilization around the resourcing, yeah. they're just good. Um, Hayfa International did um, a survey on youth in agriculture and says only 23% of youth are involved in agriculture in Kenya. Only 23%. Um, and the only way we can help and, you know, tell the youth or, you know, bring the youth closer to agriculture is through technology. And this is how um, Wenjo, he has done uh, creating a technology-based company in agriculture. Tell us more about Umfio. Sure. So Umfio means livestock. Mm -hmm. um, so official names is Umfio Usajili. Yes. Uh, which basically means livestock registration. Yes. Because Usajili is so healing mm -hmm. for registration. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. so livestock yeah. registration. Yeah. So we focus on gathering data, farmer livestock data, mm -hmm. um, so that we can unlock, unlock capital for farmers. Um, I mean, unlock I did, capital I, 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 for farmers. I did farmers. mention earlier that um, growing up and even now, um, you find the farmers are seen to be poor. Yeah. Most of the time they are not. Mm. It's only that the law, which is Movable Property Security Rights Act, that allows an asset like a cow to be used as collateral mm. has not been put into the right enforcement environment. Mm -hmm. if it's, that been is done, in, it's there. The law yeah, is there. It's already there. Yeah. Uh, 2017, mm -hmm. signed by the president, mm -hmm. uh, former president. Yes. Um, the challenge with it has been execution on the ground. Yeah. yeah. Um, because you need a technology partner like us to enforce it. Mm. And then you do need the other players in the market to also embrace it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because right now, do farmers get, um, especially dairy farmers or livestock farmers, do they get loans on, you know, their cows? They do. Cows? They do. But um, the degree at which they get the loans is so small, mm -hmm. so little. Yes. Compared to the formal type of loans that you and I get or anyone else who's in employment, etc. Yeah. Et cetera, et yeah. Etc. Etc. Um, so it is wise for the policymakers and organizations like us, the stakeholders within the livestock mm -hmm. chain, to create a way of enforcing the movable property security mm -hmm. rights. Mm -hmm. That is as far as livestock farming is concerned yeah. and an organization like us is concerned. Mm. Yeah. All right, let's talk about how you found out that this is what you want to do. Where was that bulb? You know, you, you had been working <laughs> in the corporate, but that, that, yeah. that uh, the, 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 when... The light, light bulb, bulb moment, came yeah. out and you're like, yes, yeah. this is this is what I want to do. So two things. So one, um, growing up, we would definitely see our parents, you know, relatives, uncles and aunties here and there sell off their livestock. It's been a practice that happens every single day even now. Mm. So a farmer selling a livestock means they're losing an asset. What can be done about mm. it, you know? Mm. So I mentioned at the height of COVID, a bit of research here, trying to understand what can we do differently mm. as far as technology is concerned, myself and my partners. Yeah. Um, and then the light bulb moment came. Mm. You know, so we asked ourselves, okay, so what is this problem called? The dead capital problem. So dead capital problem refers to the value of the asset trapped and locked in into the asset. Mm. So if you're referring to a cow, how do you unlock it? So that's how Infuyo Usajili uh, mm, came born. out to me. Yeah. So the first thing was, of course, inspiration, mm. you know, like uh, background upbringing and all that. Yeah. Then the second thing was, oh, there's already a law for the movable property security. Yeah, that has been put in you know? place. You know, mm. um, and as it is right now, farmers do get loans here and there, mm -hmm. but the structure to which they get the loans needs to be improved. Mm. So that's where we come in with our technology to address this as far as farmer livestock data is concerned. Yes. We have our own software mm -hmm. and our own hardware. Mm -hmm. Software is for purposes of doing a proper KYC. That is no your, your customer. customer. Yeah. Yeah. But our customer in this case is the farmer. Yes. And then we have the KYA, which no is your? know your animal. <laughs> you know? So uh -huh. you do need the farmer yes. or the human mm. to make the animal accessible to financial institutions as mm. an asset. Mm. You know, uh, in our dream bubble, if it was ever possible, we'd rather deal directly to with the livestock. <laughs> you know, the livestock is 20 million in this country. Yes. Actually, the cows. You know? We well, have 20, goats, 20 million, million cows. 20 million cows in mm. this country. Mm -hmm. That's an old number of around 2017. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have an animal registry, mm. an animal database that uh, gives out the different animals per region. We're yet to get there. Mm. And that's one of the things that as an organization, as we focus on addressing capital disparities in farmers, yes. we also want to work with the policymakers. Yeah. We work with in different areas. Yes. Kind of help them come up with an animal registry. You know, mm. It would be mm. very interesting 
uh, for the policy holders you know uh, policy makers national government local government mm-hmm. and private stakeholders they are talking about financial institutions etc cetera, etc cetera, to have a database somewhere they yes. can you know benchmark on create budgets mm. in terms of uh, vaccination immunizations and treatment mm. you know create a routine of training farmers etc cetera, etc cetera. so basically that is what infuyo does we've mm. been at it for about two years mm-hmm. we work with banks local banks here we work with insurance companies here mm-hmm. uh, we work with uh, different associations of vet- veterinary officers uh, the oversight bodies as well the ministry and county governments mm. and all we do is simple we help the farmer unlock the value that is trapped into that asset which is the Oh nice yeah. interesting. So um if I have like three cows I have you have some money. <laughs> Those are assets. Let's flip it a bit if you mm-hmm. have three cows, mm-hmm. you know. I don't I don't know if you've, you've seen money. all these, you know. You, you've seen all these um advertisements out here, you know. Yes. Uh, someone walks into what seems to be like a bank mm-hmm. with a logbook and moves out with some cash. Yes. The same is true of the animal. Mm. It's only the enforcement bit which is a bit you know are not structured and that's mm. where we come in yeah. and we work with the different stakeholders mm. to streamline it and that's what we've been doing for oh. the three years. Oh, right. interesting. What are the challenges you found in that sector in terms of I'm um, trying to unlock this our farmers willing of course I, I'm, I'm sure probably they're willing I don't know. Um our farmers yeah. willing yeah. what 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 are the hurdles in 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 what you do? So we've we've coined a term where we don't find them to be challenges anymore. We call them interesting topics internally because uh, yeah. i have to say and you can read this on our website that is infusajili.com mm-hmm. where we talk about our cash talk who is the farmer mm-hmm. and also on our socials uh, which is infusajili on linkedin yeah. infusajili on twitter mm-hmm. etc etc farmers are interesting people first they are not polluted with the urban city life so they're always welcome you that's mm-hmm. number one mm-hmm. so they will not push you away mm-hmm. when you're trying to help them understand mm. that you have value for them that's number one yes number two they have a lot of deficiency of information and that makes it interesting because they really want to hear you know they want to hear again mm. over again and yes. they really want to reference to it they want to take notes etc etc so thinking, the willingness is yeah. off the top i'm 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 totally shocked on, on the flip side you know people whose average age is 61 yeah, <laughs> as in, in in these other places you know yeah. your mother is telling you I would just open that whatsapp group for me or yeah. just they they have no idea how to yeah. um get in technology that was my biggest question how do you you know um let that farmer understand yeah. how this technology is going to help that's what we call the interesting topics yes. yeah that's our coin or oh, you don't call it as a, as no, the as interesting a topics for us because <laughs> um being on the ground mm-hmm. the first thing we do to distribute this information and help the farmers yeah. are activations we group farmers in groups or work with existing groups you know mm-hmm. community based organizations yes. common interest groups uh, the community based mm-hmm. organizations mm-hmm. dairy farms farm cooperatives there's so many mm-hmm. farmers are already structured in a way mm-hmm. farmers already know they can actually get um copper as a loan mm-hmm. of the animal but they don't have someone like us an administrator yeah. who sits between them and, and the financial, the financial institutions yes. you know? so we do a lot of ground training you know mm. group farmers yeah. uh, in a 10 day uh, program mm-hmm. train them daily let's mm. say monday tuesday all the way through to friday yeah. or even to sunday mm. you know in those trainings we have a veterinary officer we have data collection officers mm. and we have just a marketing team you know mm. that is mm-hmm. passing around the flyers you know we have a hospitality team partnering with the dairy cooperatives or even the host farmer yes. just to offer farmers two three things here some goodies here and there mm-hmm. the training bit is usually very interesting because you know um farmers all over the whole world or let me just talk about Kenya mm-hmm. to be specific mm-hmm. uh, you will not be very comfortable speaking english to all. so at times we've been forced to have translators mm. and it ends up to be the best thing ever at times we speak only in swahili throughout mm-hmm. you know and o- always turns out to be something so interesting because the farmers tend to see the problem mm. actually in a better way than we do so they, of, yeah, yeah. they tell you oh okay yeah yeah so they're able to connect the dots and mm-hmm. you know one of the biggest problems is um the solutions built for farmers mm-hmm. and just like any other sector in technology are built inside a boardroom big problem yes when you go down to enforce more problems 
but we have built our product the reverse. Mm-hmm. We've involved farmers and other stakeholders within mm-hmm. the value chain of livestock mm-hmm. to actually create better products. This is very interesting. This is very interesting. This is some of the things that technology um driven um um answers towards some of the problems that Africa is having that we need to see more. Yeah. Um and being in that space, mm-hmm. why don't we have a lot of tech mm-hmm. in in agriculture or do we have it just that we don't know? But mm-hmm. why is is it very hard for agriculture to be um tech driven um there is some technology and i'm saying some because when you look at other sectors there is a lot of technology there's financial a lot of services it. is leading man hey and healthcare yes. and edtech and all these engineering stuff etc mm. etc et yeah let me talk for kenya and our emerging markets based on our own ground experiences mm-hmm. um so the young people you know um 35 years going uh, you know backwards and all that uh, they all want to move from the rural areas to the urban uh, places mm-hmm. where they then think of a career driven type of um you know a job employment just to make ends meet etc yes. so it's all good but the problem with that is that that rural to urban migration is just too much affecting areas like agriculture you know um we usually joke around at the office if we want to recruit students to work with us back at the farms and to literally do some type of work with mm. us um we tend to think they'll start shivering you know because their perfect picture of getting money is being somewhere in an office in an office you know corner office uh-huh. you know just getting <laughs> some good time. money living a good life and all that it's all good but there's actually more money in the farm yeah as opposed to actually being employed and all yeah. that you know and we have a lot of youth uh, doing this uh, mm. in the country yes uh, you know Uh, so it gets quite interesting because 35 million Kenyans are youth mm. you know yeah and that is 75% of the Kenyan population mm-hmm. the census 2019 yeah you know and 35 million Kenyans being youthful 14 million Kenyans are actually living in urban cities living uh, and working in urban almost cities. half of the almost half youthful population of the country you know so you know the the story we grew up being told that you know you need to go to Soma school and uh, have some kwa bd pat a degree pat a degree ku a lawyer ku a doctor and it's all good it's all good the, the problem with all that is that we need to eat yeah. we have an interesting quote we say at the office mm-hmm. if agriculture fails then everything else fails because what are you going to eat how are you going to feed eat. you have to eat How are you going to feed yourself? There's just yeah. so many opportunities as far as agriculture is concerned, you mm-hmm. know. I have a good example of a friend of ours in Joska who currently, you know, uh, grows uh, uh, potatoes, you know, skumas, mm-hmm. uh, tomatoes, all these nice groceries. Mm-hmm. And he's actually in his 20s. And all he does is pack them nicely after harvest mm-hmm. and distribute them to the markets. You know, and now that that is all he does, you know, mm. nine to five, yeah. and he's making good money. You know, mm. if you're making two thousand dollars, two hundred thousand Kenyan shillings month a month off that, yeah, that is good. So the question is, why do we not have many youths doing this? Oh, it's a very hard question. But as we said, it's it's the perception that you have. I was, I like for for example, I I, I didn't grow up in a farm, but I was. Um, focused on education I was told yo <laughs> degree lazima you you got to do this it was very it, and I didn't know anything about um farming and now that I'm older we have farms I'm just wondering what to do with them yeah and it's not that I wouldn't want to know or yeah. so it's because the perception I had and how my family knew they only knew that going to school and getting A job was the only way is the only way to get myself out of yeah. you know um uh, situations but the problem with that actually kangeda is you have so many youth graduating yeah you know getting jobs there are no jobs the, the, you know <sighs> statistics of uh, census 2019 mm-hmm. you know that gap of previous census 2009 yeah. and 2019 yes. talks about 5.4 million youth mm. 35 years and below mm. an increase mm. 5.4 that means that's an average of about 540,000 yes year on year for 10 years yes so what does that mean in the next 
10 years. So that, everyone wants more. to be in an office somewhere. Yes. Yet you can go back home if at mm-hmm. all. Yeah. You know, you have somewhere you could farm mm-hmm. or do other, you know, uh, innovations around agriculture like agriculture. what we've done. Yes. Using technology mm-hmm. to unlock capital mm-hmm. for farmers. Yeah. yeah. Because, I, I mean, if we as an African country, and you know the, the problem is that our population is growing, the young population is growing. Very who, fast, yeah. How are we going to feed ourselves if we are not getting our hands dirty? It's a very important question to to ask. And what do we do? Is it... And, it, and I heard you talking about policies and policies even in education. Do you think that we have enough policies in education that help, um, you know, our kids? And I, mm-hmm. and I think, and I, I'm, I'm thinking about even the CBC situation. I yeah. did not see a lot about, I just saw a lot about food and, <laughs> and cooking, but, you know, the, not so much about agriculture. Yeah, not that, so now, much. Now that you've mentioned, actually, yeah. because I have two young boys. Yes. I'm a five-year and a two-year-old. Mm-hmm. The five year goes to school, of course, on the CBC. Yeah, I have never seen him, um, you know, do any career agriculture <laughs> related type of activities. You know, it's all corporate type of things and all that, and it's all good. Who but, is gonna feed us? You know, um, I think to answer you uh, from where we sit and the experiences we've had on the ground, the first thing should be policy. There are policies right now, mm. but they are rarely enforced. All right, you know, and. A bunch of problems yes, around to get into yes. there. Okay. Because they cut across you <laughs> know, special interests, yes. the executive, the yes. ministries and all yes. that. A lot of politics there. Yeah. Not, not good for the conversation. So the mm-hmm. first thing is policy. Mm-hmm. Are we able to revamp the policy? So just create a new policy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then the second thing, how then do we enforce it? We have a devolved government mm-hmm. and there's a lot that can be done. You know, As far as going down to the grassroots end, Enforcing this policy. Yes. And then the third thing which I'd like to benchmark on what is happening, mm-hmm. the hustler fund. Forgive me for using this. Yes. But the hustler fund, in my own opinion, if we had an agricultural version that is giving farmers necessary resources for free, you know, as long as their produce, their harvest, going to market, etc., has been taken care of by the government, that would be nice. You know? Then the fourth thing is now what you've mentioned, our educational uh, structures or learning institutions, you know, it would be better to actually have more emphasis mm-hmm. on agriculture. Mm-hmm. If you're not feeling the agriculture vibe as an activity, why not think of how to innovate a technology around it? You know, there are tons and tons and tons of tech. You know, every now, every now and then, you get to see on the papers, on TV, a new tech uh, helping. Uh- Yes, f- uh, helping uh, uh, shoppers, mm-hmm. you know, e-commerce, yes. left, right, and center. What about farmers? You know, uh, Stephen Paul, thank you. We can see some of your um, questions are saying, "I love the way you transitioned challenges into interesting topics." That was that was fresh. That was so fresh. And now the, they ask uh, Bernard, "What is your short term um, strategy versus long term um, in terms of now your business?" Sure. That's our interesting. Short arms, That's a very yeah. interesting Thank question. Thank you, Stephen, for that. That's a, that's a good question. Yes. Um, our short term strategy is basically to make sure that the penetration of financial services go, goes higher than 1%. Mm-hmm. Um, at the moment, our former related loans in this country are under 1%. Sorry, just, as, just, just, just go back. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right now? Just go back. Just, so right now, mm-hmm. um, at the moment, and this is statistics from a business registration service, mm-hmm. that's BRS which is a government um, agency. So last year on Business Daily, that's our newspaper, mm-hmm. they published and said only 58,048, let's round it up to 60,000, assets, livestock assets were used to acquire a loan across all the financial institutions in this country. From 35, you told us we have 35 million cows. Um, uh, we have 20 million cows. Oh, 20 million 20 million cows. cows. <laughs> but the loans that were offered as mm-hmm. of last year, June, yes. uh, 2021. Average, did they say how much was it was averaging at in terms of how mm. much is the loan? The loans are pretty small. The loans yeah. are anywhere between $200 all the way down. That's 20000 all the way down. Oh, because yeah. as far as um, using the animal as an asset is concerned, the enforcement is still pretty weak. Mm-hmm. And that's where technology companies like us come in mm-hmm. and we are able to solve the problem. Yes. So to answer Stephen Paul, our core mandate for the short-term period is to make sure we advance in information 
and selling of our financial services through partners mm-hmm. to the farmers. Yes. We want farmers to be able to get comfortable uh, with the use of a livestock as an asset to help them get some money. You know, mm-hmm. they yeah. need the money for so many reasons. You know, a farmer needs the money to be able to pay bills, you know, uh, meet school fees, medical bills, mm. etc., etc., and all that. Well, a long-term strategy is to be able to expand across the whole continent. Yes. The problems we face here in Kenya are similar to the problems elsewhere in any... In other emerging, African countries, yeah, yes. Yeah, in practically any other emerging uh, market in the mm-hmm. world. Mm-hmm. All right, let's talk about what um, challenges farmers face in terms of um, getting their livestock as mm-hmm. collateral. Um, what have you seen in terms of... Um, the health of the animals mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. do they have that capacity of making sure that the animals are, are 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 kept well um what do financials also look at in terms mm-hmm, of mm-hmm, looking at mm-hmm. the um livestock animal as a collateral yeah. farmers face a couple of challenges as mm-hmm. far as um the usage of livestock as an asset is concerned yes so the first problem they face that we have seen and we correct it as we go along yes. is deficiency of information. Right? Yeah. So farmers don't really know legally the livestock is an asset. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of informational deficiency there that we handle through the trainings I mentioned, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. Then the second thing is farmers don't keep records, unfortunately. Ideally, um, a farmer should be able to keep immunization, treatment and health, production and even nutrition records for this animal because it's an asset. If I need to sell my cow to you, mm-hmm. and I'm telling you my cow has been identified by way of an ear tag, you know, I have the valuation, I have the health records. If I'm meant to sell the animal to you at $1,000 or 100,000 Kenyan shillings, I'll tell you no. I'll bump it a bit because of all these nice records that I have, you know, uh, the health, the immunization, etc., mm. etc. Et yes. Well, we look at the different stakeholders within this value chain, especially financial uh, services and institutions. Livestock insurance is still under 0.5% as far as livestock are concerned in this country. You know? mm-hmm. And livestock insurance in itself is under 20 years. And it's still a colonial type of cover, yes. you know, a mortality cover. So even if a farmer takes up an insurance cover for one year, livestock insurance cover that is, they still have a challenge of meeting health-related nutrition you know, uh, bills. Mm. So we are trying also to work with the enforcers to help them understand that there's need to update, um, you know, uh, the cover mm-hmm. as far as the livestock insurance is concerned. Mm-hmm. Now you get to the financial services, uh, you know, the banks, the microfinance, the circles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They have carved their own small niche of how to address farmer-related capital, mm-hmm. but they are usually very skeptical when it comes to use the asset as a livestock in the absence of technology providers. So yes. you are giving them a lot of peace of mind because you are able to do a proper full KYC of the farmer you mm-hmm. know, and benchmark it with their criteria mm-hmm. and give them all the necessary parameters that are needed and do the same for the animal. You know, we know the height of the animal, the weight, the type, the breed and start creating immunization records, etc., etc. That helps in mitigating the risk that they face because they do need to get comfort you mm-hmm. know, that the asset they have given a loan against is actually being maintained and managed in the right way. Mm-hmm. As far as all these records are concerned. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what what I'm hearing is that we still have a long way to go in terms of um helping farmers get access to funding through um their livestock. It is a long way only because of enforcement. Yes. Right now, if you go down to the ground in the rural areas, you'll find your grandmother, you know, mm-hmm. your uncle, etc. etc. Yeah. Is currently servicing a loan. Mm-hmm. A Shylock loan, you know. So they go to a Shylock somewhere in the village, someone who has a bit of capital here and there, and tell them, I need only 5,000 Kenya shillings and I will give you back in about a month. Mm-hmm. If I can't give you after a month, my cow there, you can take it as mm-hmm. collateral. Mm-hmm. It's practically the we, same thing we, we are talking we've about. We've actually had a lot of cases yeah. um, like that. And there were even some microfinance companies that were also definitely involved in that and, 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 and how they were, you know, coming to pick those, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's basically assets. because of uh, no administrator model. That's where we are giving them a lot of peace of mind. Yeah. You know, we create an ecosystem where the whole visibility of the farmer and the livestock mm-hmm. or the animal is clear to them. 
Yeah. On top of that, we are keeping the records progressively. Mm. We are always on the ground to make sure that the health of the animal is okay mm-hmm. because we're dealing with vet officers yes. and we're giving reports to them, etc., etc. Well, at it, educating the farmers that now that you've gotten a thousand dollars or a hundred thousand Kenyan shillings, you have not gotten it for you to just squander it. So you work with our financial institutions to make sure that this farmer is being trained. Mm. You qualify for a hundred thousand Kenyan shillings, mm-hmm. but we encourage you. To use it like this, like this, because it's a loan that you need to pay after a certain duration of time. Yes. And so they are taught how to be careful. Mm. They are taught how to also enlarge their business uh, with the help of veterinary officers and other stakeholders you work with mm. within the value chain of livestock. Yeah. They are taught this is how you need to immunize the cow. This is how you increase production. This is the nutrition program you have, etc., etc. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. I mean, you spoke about um, policies, and I've heard that. You know, a lot of policies that needs to be addressed for um, farmers to go to the next level and even yeah. for um, involvement of youth in agriculture. Some of the policies that you might be thinking about, tell us some that you think need to be addressed. I loved what you talk about, the Hustlers Fund, the mm-hmm. um, the mm-hmm. 50 billion Hustlers Fund that is now being given, um, people are being given 500 shillings. Have you tried it? 900 shillings. Have you tried it yourself? It has refused. It has refused. It <laughs> hasn't worked. And today they texted me saying, yo, you need to jisajili. Actually, yeah. It's, yeah. I, I saw that. Jisajili. You know, usajili. <laughs> Literally what we do. Yeah. yeah. So, and um, you talked about how we can use the hazardous land or we could have had the, um, been able to use the hazardous land fund yeah. to help farmers. Mm-hmm. Um, if you were the administrator of Hustlers Fund, how would you... Um... I would definitely focus on farmers mm-hmm. for so many reasons. Yeah. Um, just before we went on break, I was about to give you an example. We've gone to farms where they literally throw away the milk, where they throw away the skin, you know, mm-hmm. the hide of the animal and all that, mm-hmm. simply because they don't have market. access to market. Mm-hmm. You know, the roads are terrible, etc., etc., mm. And the market itself... And if it is milk, they don't have enough chillers, you know, the coolers mm. for the milk and all yes. that, you know. And they don't have anyone to help them. They just move away from their small uh, village. Small and, uh, and all that, yeah. farming, yes. 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 Uh, because now everyone is in the city. The big uh, manager bank, you know, the big boss at the bank, the big manager is at the office in mm. Nairobi. Yes. Really goes down to the ground so mm. he doesn't get it. Yeah. You know, the policy enforcers don't care anything for the farmer, the mm. policies themselves yes. are not working right, etc., etc. So to yes. answer you, yeah. I think a Mkulima fund would be ideal. And I'm not talking about subsidizing fertilizers. Yes. But let me just focus on livestock more than crop. Yeah. I'm talking about, is this farmer a dairy farmer? Let's pick a dairy farmer for, for you know, uh, for a start. Yes. Is this farmer producing milk? Yes. What happens if you give him another cup for free? And on top of that, the government has enough muscle mm-hmm. to actually make sure that veterinary officers are tending to the animal. Making sure is the animal eating right? Mm. Is the vaccination, immunization, treatment that are being done right? Yes. And legally they are mandated to do that. Because mm. again, it's in the law. Yes. You know, the Animal Health Act, etc., etc. Yeah. And other laws. So I'm talking about being able to enforce, enable them. Yeah. Enable them to do more. You know, yeah. you have 10 cows producing about a thousand liters of milk maybe in 30 days. How do we move it to 2,000 liters? And now that we've moved you to 2,000 liters, where do, are we taking this milk? Are there enough coolers and chillers around these, you know, farmers? Mm-hmm. You know, is the transportation of the milk between the farm and the dairy cooperative mm-hmm. there or not? You know, mm-hmm. how much milk are we wasting because of lack of chillers and coolers, poor transportation, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Mm-hmm. If there's no processor of a milk on site, how do we enable all these milk? to be shipped to all these big boy, mm. you know, uh, manufacturing um, uh, equipments yes. of, of milk, etc., etc. Yeah. Then how then do we create such a nice formal importation, you know, mechanism of shipping out the milk yeah. or the byproducts of milk? Mm. There's still a very big deficiency there. I know that you have been in that livestock um, um, supply chain for a very long time. Um, what do you think are... Or are there opportunities that you've seen in the market that, you know, someone can tap into and, you know, make the dough? 
the opportunities are endless as uh-huh. far as the whole livestock value chain is concerned. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. you start with a farmer. Yes. What does the farmer have to offer? Uh-huh. What do you think as a youthful person you would do? You know, I'll give you an example. There's uh-huh. a lot of um, a deficiency of maize uh-huh. in some areas. I mean, green maize. Uh-huh. You have to eat githeri, you know. The, let me say the second national food in this country mm. after Ugali. Yeah. And again, you still have to eat Ugali. I mean, you know? can you imagine? Uh, sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm dig- I digress. But I had an interview a while ago and they were saying that now staple food in Kenya is not Ugali or mm-hmm. Kiteri. Mm-hmm. Guess what it is? What is it? I'm curious. Wheat. Wheat. Every morning, what do you take? Mkate, you know, chapati. Ngumu. Yeah, ngumu. Ngumu. They call KDF. Yes. Yeah. Economy ya kadogo, yeah. you know. And that's what people are eating. Yeah, so the opportunities are just endless. Yes. So for the youth and anyone else would be interested to get into that value chain, you just need to start a bit of research. You know, you can do your paper research, that theory, whatever and all that, mm. then literally go down to the ground. Mm-hmm. Ask yourself where the problems are mm-hmm. and what solutions can you bring to them. Mm-hmm. I've given an example of farmer. You start from the farmer. What is the farmer producing? Mm-hmm. You know, what can you do with that? You are youthful, you are learned, mm-hmm. you are educated, you yes. know about technology. Yes. You know, yeah. um, you're exposed. Yeah. A farmer doesn't even know how to use a Twitter account. Yes. There's this one gentleman I see on Twitter all the time, you know, yeah. just speaking of how he's, you know, uh, harvested a lot of onions here, a lot of potatoes here. Yeah. And many, many people keep commenting on it and just giving their orders. What has he done? So just taken an opportunity yes and is run with it mm. you know that's mm. one example yes uh, the second example is now the providers within the whole value chain you know you have um livestock insurance mm-hmm. still very low mm-hmm. if you're good in selling why not go sell it mm-hmm. you know why not think of a way that you can work with people like us and even financial institutions mm-hmm. to grow the livestock insurance cover as well yeah. even crop insurance there are a lot of innovations happening out here uh, by various startups, mm. just giving a lot of crop-related insurance, advisory services, yes. climatic, uh, um, you know, uh, and weather patterns and all yeah. that. It doesn't need a lot of money. It just needs you to be a middleman, one way or the other. So within that value chain, mm. you know, there's milk. Give you a small example, but I'm going to withhold his name for one of uh, farmer cooperatives in uh, in Gidongori. Yes. You know, see this gentleman, a good friend of mine, I don't want to expose him. So he goes out and buys 10 border borders and employs 10 riders who he's not paying until the end of the month. And basically all they do is go into deep interior farms, collect the milk and bring them to a chiller. So some few months later, he gets a loan and buys two chillers, Mm -hmm. 5,000, 5,000. These are coolers. And now he's now picking the milk with his commission-based employees, bringing them down to the chiller for freezing and all that and mm-hmm. chilling. Yes. And then he's made a contract with the big boy, you know, the big boys of milk processing and all that. Yes. Then they can't pick. What has he done? He's just taken advantage of the whole value chain. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. There's something else that you can do as far as beef is concerned. Yes. There's fattening program, you know. So many what people do you mean I know. fattening program? Fattening program means making the, the beef cow fatter and ready for a better price at the auction. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, we are eating a lot of meat and we don't mean we, we don't meet the demand as well. Yeah. So how do you move a cow from somewhere like Rock to Nairobi? Yeah. And make some money? That is another opportunity. Mm. You know, so I'd like to possibly encourage and challenge our youth, you know. For you to do anything different, you must move out of your comfort zone. Is it possible for you mm. to access some capital? I yes. want to believe it is. You know, and possibly just move it. Um, you know, to an area that suits you in terms of making money. Yeah. There are various opportunities along that. I think when a young person sees someone milking, they just think this is backward, not yeah. what yeah. I would want So they think of it as backward. It's think, backward. Yeah, that's, that's backward. Too much work. It's too and much I think work. Also, we haven't... Get dirty. Yeah. Yes, we haven't done a lot of agriculture mechanization, which... You know, makes it very easy for probably farmers to farm, yeah. even for livestock. Yeah. Like if you have mechanization where you can say you can, you use machines and you use tools, and people see 
Kumbe, it's you can enjoy this um, using different tools, and that definitely would also have a positive impact in terms of you know what hurts what hurts me the most is eh? yes there are a lot of um, American startups setting foot into any African country, and they see a potential of giving a solution towards a problem in these value chain metrics yes even in crop they package it nicely run back home to you know um, produce it yeah and and give some good presentations some slides here yeah come back here with millions of dollars and execute you know so i'm i'm not saying that we are at the same level you know you know you know the same playing level as mm. far as Uh, that example is concerned but i'm saying there's just so many opportunities it, it takes moving out of the comfort zone you know um the best way to ride a bike is for you to actually do it yourself mm. yeah do it yourself do it yourself do it yourself yeah. all right um apart from that and i know that many young people and you have talked about lack of capital many young people always say that um they do not want to get into this because probably there's no money in it Yeah. You have been in this sector. Yeah. Is really there money in farming? There is. There is a lot of money in farming. As far as we are concerned, we've done two uh, livestock businesses as far as our business is concerned. Um so of course we make money from the farmer registrations and financial services given out and the trainings and the veterinary services etc cetera, etc. Cetera. And we're able to generate income. Mm. There's the other side where we literally saw an opportunity, ironically the same conversation. We have this beef cooperative in Naro, a name with held, of course. Um, so they ask us, we have cows, big fat cows for slaughter. We don't have market. What can you do? So another light bulb moment came, <laughs> and we said, okay, let's try and access some capital. And we did, and we were able to ship this animal to a meat processing facility here, and got some money. All I'm saying is the power of moving out of your comfort zone and just trying to do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of opportunities I can see um on the value chain and I think people only see the face value of milk. I mean, yeah. there's a lot that comes out of milk. There's a lot that comes out of beef. There's a lot that comes of and so skin as well. Skin as well, yeah. you yeah. know. There, there are a lot of byproducts as far as livestock is concerned. Yes. Whether you're talking about the milk side or the beef side. Mm. The mm. biggest problem and again because you're talking about a youth is mainly the perception problem. Yeah. And this is perception, you know, passed down generations, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Our parents and our parents' parents, you know. There's a reason why the average, you know, age of a farmer in this country is 60 years and above because they have not yet been polluted by the confusion of always being in the city to make a living. I'm not mm. saying you cannot be in both. Neither am I saying that you just need to be in the farm to make money mm. or in the city. All I'm saying is there's a very big gap that was left up mm-hmm. because growing up our parents would always tell us you must go to school which is all good mm-hmm. you know um you must get a degree here and there you must have a big office and all that yes. a lot of that has been preached for so long the gap at the agricultural sector is so huge it is we, huge. we, we need to start thinking how to go back there you know and 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 come to think of it when right now when you think about accessing land because of course Now when you when you start getting older you think about I need a piece of land it's a Kenyan thing everyone needs a cup of somewhere yeah but we think about getting land for development mm. and not for agriculture there's yeah. so many young people who have small brooches but it's just laying bare yeah. because they are not using or um finding out what they can do with that land yeah. in an agriculture kind of way to make money and that's a huge potential um when we were on the break we were talking about kangundu road and i think you would I, i don't mind you speaking about it in a minute yeah so yes. I, was, i was actually saying some of the opportunities are actually near us. yes uh, you'll find that the whole of kangundu road there are various markets you know There's a market at Y, there's mm-hmm. another market at Joska. Yes. There's another market in Mala. And, and it has another... really grown this like I I was there yeah. the day I'm like, oh, yeah. Again because of what you've said. So people are just buying land and building houses. Yes. And mainly the people who are doing that are people in the city who are employed yes. trying to get out of the city yes. and create a life outside. But they the just city. want to live in that land. <laughs> Which is okay, but the problem with that again who is going to farm? There's a lot of fertile land 
across that whole. So it's giving an example of saying there is deficiency of particular products. For mm. instance, means if you go to Roy Market in the morning as early as 5 a.m. all the way to 6 a.m., you know, 6, 6 there, 7 a.m., you find a lot of lorries just pouring a lot of uh, maize bags there, green maize bags. Yeah. And even before 10 a.m., you can't find any. Why? The, 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 They are all bought. They are all bought and yeah. sold out. You know the githeris, yes. the motungos, that's yeah. boiled meat yes. and all that. Yeah. I mean, I mean boiled maize and all that. There is a lot of deficiency in these mm. markets. Yes. And the, ironically, you find in other markets like Nyandarua, you know, people are literally throwing away their food. You know? We've seen farmers throwing yeah. away p- tomatoes, potatoes that have. You know, th- there is literally no market for them, and not because there is no market, but there is the policy around it and how to enforce it, yes. bring it into market, how yes. to cool it, etc. Yeah, we have a big problem there, but yeah. with problems comes opportunities, of course. Those are opportunities that people can, you yeah. know, put yourself into. There's yeah. someone called Anthony Kimani here who said, "Um, this is a very good um innovation." Uh, this is a very good innovation. Can how can someone reach out to you? Um, do you also help in um advising on uh farmer uh, on advising on uh farm? It's called what? Advising on. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, it has gone. Uh, All right, as I check it out. But uh, yes, 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 yes. Advising on how animals can be um, well put. We do. Yes. We do. So uh, fast to reach us, it's pretty simple. Uh, Infuyausajili.com. You just need to access that. Yes. The, we have our contacts there, our socials are there. Yes. Uh, then secondly, we are in the business of collecting farmer livestock data. We have to make sure that the data is quality enough mm-hmm. for the financial services to at least consider it for the access to capital farmers. Yes. That means within our ecosystem we must have veterinary officers to guarantee the quality of the animals that have been used as asset. Mm-hmm. So the vet officers to answer the gentleman help in creating a nutrition program. Yes. A feeding program. Mm-hmm. And most importantly to make sure that the farm the, the, the animals or the farmers assets which are cows, goats yes. and sheep mm-hmm. are immunized, treated etc etc. So we handhold the farmer mm-hmm. through the whole process. Yes. And with the help of all these different partners we have, it actually gets easier yeah. as we go along. All right. Uh, ma'am, uh, Ida is asking, how long does one take um, Does one take to get approved for a loan or something? It depends. Yeah. It takes about three weeks to a month mm-hmm. at most. And because there are many reasons, of course. So the first thing is we need to come down to your ground or rather to your farm. Mm-hmm we need to check the health of these animals yeah we also need to make sure that these animals are legally yours when i say legally quote and quote um in certain parts of the country a cow is considered an a community asset ngombe ya shosho ya guka ya auntie so you cannot truly pinpoint who whose it is, is. <laughs> so we have to have a bit of composition with his yeah. uh, farmer mm-hmm. so once we know truly this animal is yours based on a special criteria that we have yes. and once we've trained you in our services mm-hmm. and you are well clear with them mm-hmm. we are able to identify the animal by way of tagging the animals here with our special hardware mm-hmm. and then collect the information upload it onto our software yes. then at the back we have insurance companies that work with us to make sure that the asset is actually insured and after that we ship it again to our financial partners working at the park mm. as our banks and microfinances we have a criteria yeah. a type of a KPI to make sure this is the quality that is needed for quality assurance as far as yeah. uh, the animal is concerned right. so that um, process may take about three uh, to four weeks depending where the farmer is yes. that's number one yes number two depending on how fast we've been able to identify the farmer mm. as an individual or as a customer mm-hmm. a customer to the many services mentioned yeah the animal itself and of course uh, the health of the animal is it uh, usable in terms of collateral or mm. not mm. is it a risk there are many farmers that we've talked to but we've had to turn down their animals or their assets oh really if, yeah you find the asset is unwell yeah or the asset is malnourished is is it probably they don't know they do know yeah. but they are holding on to faith so you find <laughs> a farmer has a herd of 10 we end up just using two 
ah, you know mainly yes. because of many us mother many other yeah, you know major, factors, major here, factors you know, yes possibly there's a pandemic around yeah. so we tend to look at all these things the beauty of it is we work with groups mm. the pharma cooperatives and all that mm. so to answer the the, the, the uh, gentleman the gentleman eh? yeah it is possible and we can do it all right yeah. um uh, christina is asking um um how are you uh, talking to farmers to know about this i wish my shoshu knew about you <laughs> I like that. We yeah. have a very interesting model. Yes. We have what we call program based um you know uh, approaches. Mm-hmm. We do not need to be in the 47 counties. Mm-hmm. When we do our own internal analysis, we are able to know that only about 30 yes uh, counties are accessible for our services. Yes, yes. You know. Yeah. The rest like uh you know uh 17 are not very favorable, mm-hmm. you know. Sorry for using this example. Um if we were to go down to Trukana as a whole different story you know Omasa with Garissa Wajia and all that with all the killings happening and uh, the bandit band, banditry yeah, and all that yeah situations yes. all those uh, problems so mm-hmm. we kind of pick where it's easiest to deliver the product yeah. with the most profit after all we are profit making uh, business mm-hmm. but when it comes to educating farmers we work on a program based so we are on the ground like for 10 days making sure we are regularly and religiously training the farmers mm-hmm. in groups and collecting the orders and going farm after half, mm-hmm. farm mm-hmm. or house after house yeah. and then developing the solutions i'd be curious to know mm-hmm. where her show show is yeah and if the show show has animals <laughs> and all that yes christian if you can hear you can tell us yes yeah, yeah. we focus a lot on uh, nyeri kiambu narok yeah Uh, Muranga, a bit of Makueni, mm-hmm. and we are continuously just expanding step yes. by step. Yes. Um, um it's been such a great time hanging out with you. Thank um you. some of the things that we like to um ask our guests when they come is um just personal things. It's not a t- bad bad things, yeah. We want to get to know more about you. Okay. And uh, one question that I always like to hear is um who is your role model? Who do you look up to? as uh Wanjui. very honest and this will sound as cliche Elon Musk it's a cliche <laughs> yeah. the, the reason why i'm saying that yeah. is because everyone looks up to him yes but i look up to him in a very different way mm-hmm. the man works in the opposite direction you know he's not your steve jobs yeah he's not your amazon guy mm-hmm. he's not your bill gates he mm-hmm. works in reverse mm-hmm. you know uh, he talks about you know going against education that you don't need degrees like this like this mm-hmm. like that and all that yeah he talks about having a different way of thinking a different way of working yes you know putting in the work etc 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 yes his playbook is very different from uh, the usual work hard and get rich yes type of uh, theory his is is yeah. i think his playbook is about transformation what can you do to this and innovate well, as well yeah. to innovate yeah. um and yeah. to help people. and solve a problem yes it, yeah. yes so yeah. a problem i think many of us when we think about entrepreneurship we always think about the money yeah rather than the problem they're solving i think that's something we should uh, be focusing on all the time there's a lot of uh, unlearning that we need to do oh, as i love that along. there's a lot of yeah. and learning we need to do yeah. um even in agriculture we need to do a lot of unlearning correct yeah correct. practically in every field yes in every field yes yeah. because i think we've <laughs> yeah. we and i think part, partly yeah um it's mainly because the world changes so fast oh, it's yeah. as if after every 10 years something something different, different comes happens. in and, and and challenges our yeah. way of thinking yes. you know um we are bright people you know we are, bright, we are, we are very bright species yeah, i would say let me give it in in our own context then. Mm. um so we are hoping to do facial animal recognition in mm-hmm. future yeah among many other things what does that entail the entails being able to map out the face of the animal the animal has one unique part which is the cow and the nose of it yeah which is extremely unique it's the same as your thumb mm-hmm. thumbprint so in our discussions considerations and partners from outside um they were telling us some years back mm-hmm. just unlocking your phone with your thumbprint seem to be impossible yeah so it's the same narrative again we tend to first think it's impossible then over time we then see it is possible yeah, yeah. so i think there's a block of time mm-hmm. 
that every maybe 10 years or whatever number of years mm. our way of thinking is challenged that's what i'm saying and that, that's and why learning. we always need to innovate yeah. and and always stay up up to speed with what is going on and probably this is what should was the second question and i think you've said a bit about what you're going to do but where do you see um feel usually in the next five years so fast is a powerhouse uh in terms of financial services as yeah. far as the farmers mm-hmm. are concerned mm-hmm. also is taking advantage of the many opportunities within the value chain of livestock yes and of course we'll let it being able to create employment you know in the next five years we want to help over a million farmers across east africa mm-hmm. and possibly in the next 10 years we'd like to triple that number across uh, the whole continent mm-hmm. because the whole continent has similar problems and we have a solution mm-hmm. so it's mainly uh, growth and scalability mm-hmm. towards helping our farmers as mm-hmm. we make money of course yeah yeah all right and the other question what would if you met the minister for agriculture and and then livestock and everything like the minister like the cabinet secretary right now who is on your docket yes. what would you tell them there is a csl in turimithika yes oh it would be an honor for us <laughs> wherever you are bona cs yes. we've been looking mm-hmm. for you and of course i do believe we'll find you yes the first thing is we would tell him can we work together as an organization and help our farmers mm-hmm. we have a visibility as far as the challenges that face our farmers mm-hmm. along the lines of cow collateralized loans yes we have a way of understanding what needs to be done as far as the policy is concerned what type of technology need to be deployed mm-hmm. and what type of enforcement needs to be done at the national government at the county government and by extension what services are the farmers getting yes. what can we do together yes with uh, the state department of livestock yes that will be an interesting conversation whatever they hear <laughs> i do hope they get to hear it all right and what if you were advising on the plight of um, farmers in kenya what um would be your message to him as well farmers need to just keep doing what they do our farmers are the most um you know uh, resilient could we say resilient resilient <laughs> but at the same time they're the most oppressed because everyone gets something from them and puts mark up and process and sell it off and all, and all that eh? so the first thing is i'd like to just keep you know encouraging them to do what they do things change you know i i'd like to believe that um there'll be a lot of technologies going back to agriculture a lot a lot of financial support going back to agriculture mm-hmm. best practices helping the farmers just keep on going on and even become better so the farmers should continue doing what they do and continuously do it with a big heart as mm-hmm. they always do All right. Um second clerk, last question. Um your advice to young people who are afraid of agriculture. There's nothing to be afraid actually. Um there is this coined term of making agriculture sexy. That's one way of looking at it. Mm-hmm. You have a lot of uh, young farmers doing a lot of groundwork on the ground, getting their hands dirty and they're making money. So what is it that they are doing that others can do? Yeah. Then you have others like myself and many others using technology to leverage on that area of agriculture mm-hmm. and make money so my advice is just get out of your comfort zone there are enormous opportunities in agriculture yes. just get out of your comfort zone mm-hmm. the best way to do it and know about it is to actually do it you don't need to be perfect but you can perfect it as you go along mm-hmm. yeah all right um the last um question mm-hmm. the last business quotes mm-hmm. or advice you got wow i get so many um, <laughs> i'd like to quote which one is that a very wine good that of mine. you know you I'd always like remember to quote one that uh, from a very good friend of mine who's actually in the country now mm-hmm. um he's from france i won't mention the name um and it's a strike of life business and any social problems that we go through as human beings mm-hmm. and i know he's listening so he told yeah. me that uh, <laughs> Life is about fighting multiple battles at the same time. Life is about fighting multiple battles at the same, at the same time. time. Mm-hmm. That applies in every way you could think about. Whether you're thinking about it in the education or career, you know, uh, in the work work life whether mm-hmm. it's entrepreneurship yeah. or employment yes. or just the normal social 
being, mm-hmm. being a human being. Yes. We fighting multiple battles. The statement sounds so clear, but if it doesn't sink in that you're fighting multiple battles yes. and at the same time. So that means you need know you need to know how to fight them mm-hmm. and actually succeed in them. For me <laughs> that's a very good quote that speaks to me not only yes. in business mm-hmm. but across everything else that stands for me. All right, Ranjohi, yeah. thank you so much for coming to the studio and giving us some great words of wisdom. My takeaway is that there are very many opportunities in agriculture. We should not fear, but go forth and get um, our hands dirty to Correct. make money. Because if we do not get into agriculture, who will feed us? Correct. The FAO, that's the Food Agriculture Organization and the UN, yes. talks about um, the food demand will go up by 70% by mm-hmm. year 2050. Oh, so agriculture is the next big thing, man. Yeah. If you're not in agriculture in the next 10 years, I don't know where. That is correct. Where yeah. you will get money from. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. It's been real. Thank you so much for those who hanged out with us on www.iconradio.co.ke. Thank you so much. And for those who are with us on the YouTube channel, thank you so much.